This is water. Behind me are various kinds of beer, wine, champagnes, and alcoholic beverages. It's interesting when I share with others why I personally do not drink alcohol. Their immediate response to me is, but Jesus turned water into wine. And they are right. They are referring to the wedding of Cana. And so there's another scripture that talks about, and even though there is no record of him actually drinking the wine that he produced at that wedding, we do have a record that Jesus did drink alcohol. It's recorded in the word of God that Jesus himself said, the son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. So even Jesus shares with us that he did drink alcohol during his time on earth. So let's explore the alcohol that was made during his time compared to now. The alcohol or wine of biblical times, according to four strong sources, all state in unison that ancient alcoholic drinks were not alcoholic at all. They had several methods to prevent fermentation of the fruit by boiling and sealing with beeswax, or boiling and diluting with water, or drying in the sun and adding sulfur, or filtering the gluten out after drying. Another surprising way that they would make alcoholic drinks is to take a cluster of grapes and actually crush them into a cup or container and drink it straight from there. These methods of preservation eliminate the component of alcohol and prevent intoxication. This was not only the wine of the Hebrews, but of the Greeks and Romans as well. Today, all alcoholic beverages are produced by fermentation of yeast, which is a fungus, and converting the sugar into ethanol. Since yeast cannot survive in alcohol, it dies and ends fermentation after the process reaches 15%. So if it is desired, then the next level is distillation, which removes all water from the ethanol and leaves the wine, beer, molasses, or grains which produce hard liquors like brandy, rum, whiskey, and vodka. Then it is left to age for various lengths of time. This process was described by instructor Lisa Roundley. So you can see the differences between ancient productions of alcohol and modern methods. Now this perplexes me because we have several scriptures in the book of Proverbs. He wrote about alcohol, about wine, and he says that wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. It also says it's not for kings, Lamel. It's not for kings to drink wine, nor rulers to crave beer. Least they drink and forget what has decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. It also says, who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises and who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine, do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly, in the end it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights and your mind will imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on high seas, lying on top of the rigging saying, they hit me but I'm not hurt, they beat me but I don't feel it. When will I wake up and find another drink? 
So although Proverbs talks against the intoxication of it, I find it perplexing that it was stated that wine or alcohol or beer or any type of champagne in that day was not intoxicating. They are conflicting formation. And so I know during biblical times, during ancient times, alcohol was actually used as medicine. It was also a lubricant and used in sacrifices, so it had a trading value. Alcohol seemed to provide solutions to many problems of their day. So where's the line drawn? Where does it become from medicine to intoxicating drink? One of the prevailing philosophies is about God's creation. So let's talk about that for a minute. Yes, God made grapes that men make grape juice or non-fermented drinks or fermented drinks from. But what man makes is his expression, good or bad or even neutral, of God's creation. Just as God created herbs and plants like the poppy or cactus, some men choose to make opium or peyote, which causes addiction, hallucination, and other adverse effects on the body. So God gives us gifts and he gives us a choice what to make with that gift. And this can refer to anything besides food and drink. God always gives man a choice in all things, whether to serve him or not, obey him or not, live a certain way or not. And each choice has their own consequence and we must accept whatever that is. So although I would that you would choose well, but it would be ungodly or not godlike for me to tell you to choose as I did. Sure, I can give advice or suggestions if you desire it, but I can only present the facts as I understand it and share why I chose as I did. I know some people who can drink all night long so many shots, so many glasses, and hold their liquor and still be functioning. Yet my personal experience is after trying champagne and wine on three occasions in my youth, and yes, they were all with adult supervision, I saw it destroy a paternal member of my family. From then on, my family always warned me to leave any atmosphere where there were people drinking. After the course of many years, I finally took the Nazarite vow, which includes not drinking anything produced by grapes. So because of those reasons, I personally choose not to drink. I told Jesus the next time I drink will be at his great feast. I mean, can you imagine how delicious this drink will be compared to all the drinks ever drunk on the earth? When the master of the feast at the wedding at Cana stated that the water Jesus turned into wine was the best, can you imagine how it will taste in heaven? 